Good morning and welcome to Kingdom at Home. We're so delighted that you chose to join us today. We are in week three of our Vision Month. We hope you're staying tuned and you're logged on and you're getting all the notifications. Now today, we're talking about how fit you are to fight. That's right, how fit are you to fight? You're gonna find out right after this message. I wanna see you as soon as we're done. I got some important announcements for you. But surely this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I am so delighted that you have allowed me to come into your home this morning. I am honored. I believe that God indeed has a word for you. I know that what the Lord has deposited in my heart for you today is going to be transforming, life transforming, if you would receive it by faith. If you are wherever you are today, you can call someone, give them a, a, a little nudge, um, a, a text, just say to them, kingdom experiences on the air, and you cannot afford to miss it. You help us in virtual evangelism as you press the share button, as you continue to share it, you are engaging others and allowing them to have the same opportunity that God has afforded you to be able to be moved and touched by the word of God. And so we are looking for you to assist us in this endeavor. And I thank God that you are going to help us to share this and send it around the world that as many as possible can be touched by the word of God. It is a joy to come to you. So we want to say hello to our friends around the world, um, those in Canada, those in America, those in the Bahamas. We say hola. God bless you. We pray that you are continually strengthened by the rich word that God brings through this medium. And so we want to go into word of prayer. I want to get into this word. And I believe that God wants to make us better as we enter the wonderful riches of his truth. Let us pray. Father, we are so delighted that we can come into your presence, for in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. We pray, O oh God, that you would enlighten and illuminate our minds to receive the word of God. For in the entrance of your word, bring it to light and life. And so God, today we thank you for what you will say to us. Lord, I pray that you would grant me clarity of thought, precision of expression, bend my will and make it thine. Let every hearer be moved by the power of God. Kermit decrease and your mighty power increase in Jesus' name. Give us access in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This morning, I want to speak to you from uh, a topic that I believe is going to be uh, a topic that sets the stage. As you know, um, this is a brand new year and God is up to something marvelous for his people. This year, uh, our church, Kingdom Worship Center International, located in Freeport, Grand Bahama, in the beautiful uh, nation of the Bahamas um, have adopted for this year the theme strategic aim. Strategic aim, A I M. And it is the acronym, AIM is the acronym for activation, infiltration, and manifestation. Activation, infiltration, and manifestation. And so we believe that if you are going to aim correctly, if you're going to quiet, if you're going to infiltrate, if you're going to manifest, it takes strategic focus and intentionality. You've got to be committed. You've got to be all in if you are going to embrace all that God has purposed. This year, we have made as a mantra, we're missing nothing this year. We expect God to do what he says he will do. So this, so today, I want to speak to you this morning from this little subject, you're fit to fight. You're fit to fight. In other words, I don't care how you feel. I don't care how you look. I don't care how things have been going in your life. You are fit 
You're qualified by the Holy Spirit and by the God to whom you are in covenant to fight. You are fit to overcome and to gain access and victory from the enemy. You have the capacity to win. You have the ability to overcome and to succeed in all of your endeavors. But it is about how you believe, how you think, and how you are willing to respond. One of the things I've come to discover is that if we are going to win this season, if we are going to truly acquire all of the things we believe that God has purposed and predestined for us, then several things are critical to our understanding. One of the things we must get a hold of, it is the fact that we are fit to fight. We are fit or qualified to walk in success. One of those areas that I want to zero in today is in the arena of prayer. I don't believe we can ever speak too little on this most important subject. The Bible speaks volumes of information to us on this subject matter, but I want to zero in on a passage of scripture that I believe will be my focus text. And it's found in the book of Ephesians chapter six, Verse 12, and it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It gives us here the purpose of the text. If we read that in in, in, in and understand it in context, it gives us the purpose. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, our fight is not physical. Our fight is not against other people or persons, but it's a spiritual war. It's a spiritual fight or combat. He says, but he tells us who we fight. We fight principalities. Principal spirit, and in what says he says, principalities and powers. He then says, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. The writer of Ephesians wanted us to understand that if we are going to win and wage a war and win in the arena of prayer, we have to first understand who it is we are fighting. If we are going to win in this season of our life, we must understand who we are fighting. The unfortunate reality that many in the church do not know who they're fighting. And so they're fighting their boss and they're fighting their husband and their wives. They're fighting their children. And so the combat has been carnal. And because it's been carnal, it does not have the endowment of God's favor because God says in his word, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So if you're fighting flesh, if you're fighting people in your family, if you're fighting persons you can see, then you're fighting the wrong person and thing. Hear me, friends, if we are going to fight effectively, we must first understand who it is we're fighting. You can't get your flesh caught up in this because you've been saved too long to not comply to the word of God. See, God does not give you a, a free pass because you've been saved long. God doesn't give you a free pass because, oh, I, I do this for him or do that for him. All of us must abide by the dictates and principles and word of God. We have to abide and comply to the word. The word says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You do not wrestle flesh and blood. If you are wrestling flesh and blood, you are wrestling, you're fighting the wrong people, persons, things. If you are engaging in warfare in the natural, you are combating the wrong 
Amen. He says if to wage, if we're going to win, we have to wage our war in the realm of the spirit. And this is necessary. Why? Because you must win it in the spirit in order to see the manifestation in the natural. Every war that is won first in the natural is first won in the spirit. I'm reminded when Jesus was speaking and he would, he cursed the fig tree. The Bible says he told the fig tree from the day no man shall eat of thee. That was a waging of a war in the realm of the spirit. And the minute he spoke it, something in the realm of the spirit manifested. The Bible said he left and on the morrow and on the next day when Jesus came, the, his disciples bringing it to remembrance, say, Master, behold the fig tree that you curse is withered to the root. It's dead. When Jesus spoke to it, when he waged war in the realm of the spirit, the roots dried up. And when the roots dried up, it took a process of time for the manifestation. See, the problem is we want to see instant work. And because we want to see instant work, we don't have the patience to wait it out. And so we, we start cursing the thing. And then all of a sudden we shift from what God said in the spirit and we take the fight naturally because our inclinations and our desires is to see instant results. Friends, we've been missing it because we've been too busy looking for instant results. And so we have been taking the war because we've been starting out in spirit, but we've been moving into flesh and we've been fighting the people and persons when God said fight spirit. If you're going to win the wage, the war, and win in the realm of the natural, you've got to fight in the spirit. You've got to pray. You've got to believe God to pull down strongholds and every man step down it. You've got to believe that the way, that the west and the warfare that you fight is not carnal but mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds. And it demands engagement in the realm of the spirit. And so you've got to take God at his word. If we're going to win, church, people of God, if we're going to win, there's no more time to paddicate. This is no cry baby season. This is a season when you lay a hold of the altar and believe the words of the book and believe that greater is he that's in you and me than he that is in the world. This is the year that we must be intentional and strategic in our aim. We don't shoot haphazardly. We got to first aim well. We got to go and activate it. Start it up. Get your prayer life started. Activation is the order of the day. Secondly, you've got to make sure that you infiltrate. You've got to infiltrate. You can't just activate it. You now got to get in the thing. Mobilize it and get effective. And if you can activate it and you can infiltrate those territories, I'm here to tell you manifestation will be your portion. Manifestation will be my portion. So Paul now, writing to the church of Ephesus, he says, I want the church of Ephesus to understand that we do not fight in the flesh. Our fight, if it's going to be lasting and effective, must be a spiritual fight. It's not a fight with, with, army, uh, with armor and a fight with, with, with real swords or natural swords. And so he used the comparison in the book of Ephesians and he began to tell them how to put on the various aspects or parts of the armor in the same chapter. And he says about putting on the helmet and putting on the breastplate and putting on shoot, I'm your foot short with the preparation of the gospel of peace and the belt, your loins, righteous. And he begins to talk about the, the shield of faith and the sword, which is the word of God. He was now making the comparison because he was now able to see the Roman attire of warfare and their military attire. And he used each part in comparison to what we must put on in the realm of the spirit if we're going to fight this spiritual war. 
One of the things you would discover on the armor that there was no piece for the back. The back, the breastplate was held by a strap, a, a cross cord. In the Roman uh, military outfit, there was a cross cord. Why? Because it was so designed. Why didn't they put a piece of male protective armor on the back? Because they believed that any soldier who ran should die. And they left the back exposed to say, if you are a coward in this fight, you should not live. And so if you have to run, your back was exposed to the enemy. I'm here to tell you that God never gave us anything for our back. Why? Because it was never his intention that you and I would run from a fight. Why? Because he knows in whom we believe. And we are persuaded that he is able to keep that which we have committed unto him. I am here to tell you it's time to fight for your stuff. Your children are important enough to fight for. Stop hoping and playing Russian roulette with your children's future and your, your wife's future, your husband's future, your future. And you're just letting life go on and whatever buck up goes and you just hope that something good will manifest at the end of the day. We wrestle not. The devil wants your family. He wants everything that pertains to you. And you've got to guard it with your words. You've got to guard it with your intercession. You've got to guard it, protect it, and you've got to defend it with everything in you. Your faith must stand strong in seasons like this. We start off in 2021. I refuse to lose this time. I refuse for my children not to have the best. My wife not to have the best. And my family not to have the best. And I'm not talking carnality. I'm talking about walking in health and wealth and success. I want them to have the best. Every person who loves their family wants the best for them. My church, I believe the church that God has assigned me to, to have the best. I want the best for everybody. But in order to do it, I can't just sit down gingerly with my legs crossed and my hands folded, hoping that something good would happen. I've got to be intentional. I'm here to tell you, you must be intentional and do what you have to do. Fight the good fight of faith. And so we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hear me, your fight is not fleshy. I know they hurt you. I know you went through a lot. I know it don't seem fair. But if you do it God's way, you'll come out victorious. Hear me by God's spirit. I'm speaking to somebody. If you do it God's way, it may seem like it's taking a little longer. It may seem like you're at a disadvantage. But hear me by the spirit of God. If you do it God's way, you will come out. God doesn't see the end from the beginning. He knows how this will turn out if you put your trust in him. But if you listen to the enemy... And you seek to destroy that person in the natural while you're digging their ditch. Your ditch is being dug also. It's not God's purpose. The enemy then has a legitimate claim to say to God, they're in violation of your word. Therefore, give me access to them. Hear me. They're in violation he is an accuser of the brethren. He will come back and he will accuse you before God and say, God, look, they are in violation of what you said. Therefore, I should have the right to cross-examine them. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. That is why I'm encouraging you, saints of the Most High God. Don't fight according to how you feel. Do not allow your flesh to govern your outcome. Trust God in faith. Believe. Let patience have a perfect work. Trust the fact that the God you serve, that the God you love, that the God you depend upon is well able. He is qualified to do what he says he will do for you. I believe with all my heart that if you truly give that pain to God, that hurt to God, that disappointment to God, that betrayal to God. God will turn it around for your good and you will sit back without any 
question to the magnificence and the delivering power of your God. You are, you are fit to fight. But Bishop, you don't know what I've been through. You are fit to fight. Do you have God? You're fit to fight. Do you trust it? You're fit to fight. Do you have a prayer in your lip? You are fit to fight. This God we serve is well able to deliver. This God we serve is well able to turn our morning in to dancing. What we do in this season is critical to the kind of outcome we will experience. I believe that we speak if we're winning in this realm in order for us to win in this season we must have a clear outcome to what relevance the unseen is in relation to the seen. The truth of the matter is the less we are prepared to fight to wrestle for our future in the realm of the spirit, the more difficult it is to live on planet Earth. What do you mean, Bishop Saunders? Well, how we live, the comfort, calm, tranquility, and peace we experience in the realm of the natural is built upon the fight in the spirit. If we don't care about the realm of the spirit, we give the adversary access to mobilize his troops and affect our lives in the earth. Everything, hear me, everything we experience in the realm of the natural has been affected by the realm of the spirit. The Bible says it this way. He says the things that are not seen is sure or more sure than the things that are seen. For the things that are seen is temporary, but the things that are not seen is eternal. In other words, we are shaped in the natural by the things we do not see. And so you got to understand that what you do not see affects what you now see. And so that is why we must take the fight to the spiritual realm. We must take our fight to the spiritual realm if we are to see victory in the realm of the natural. The problem is the enemy makes us believe and he makes suggests to us that prayer is not really valuable or important. You just say a little a uh, little dab will do you. Just say a little recital and it'll be fine. He, he does not want you to ever get into the deep intercession where the soul bears itself before the Lord prostrate. He doesn't want you to get to the place where you give your all and you cry and moon before God. He doesn't want. Why? Because that kind of prayer is going to birth results and it will handcuff the devil and it will handcuff his imps and prevent them to be mobilized in your life or activate in your life and he will cause us to believe that prayer has no true power in the life of humanity. I want you to know that he who prays stays. I'm here to tell you, if you pray, you will stay. Something about prayer. Prayer is a fortification. It's an undergirding. It's a support system. The angelic host of heaven comes to your aid when you pray. When I pray, we've got to pray. We are fit to pray. And the devil doesn't want us to learn this secret. That is in the arsenal of the believer if we utilize it for the glory of God. It is our praying. And by this, I am talking about praying according to the will of God. I don't want you to think I'm just talking about all recitations. I'm talking about prayer that is not praying amiss. I'm talking about praying the word of God. If you delight yourself in me, I'll give you desire. He says, bring my word to my remembrance. He's talking about wrestling. And see, when you bring his word to his remembrance, you fortify, you give God the license or the, 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 the strength to now move on your behalf. In law, 
And I, I believe I'm saying this correctly, and I, I stand to be corrected by those lawyers out there, but I believe there is something in law called precedence or precedence. And precedence are actually cases that has gone on before that has ruled in a certain way or favorably. And what they use these precedence or precedence to do is to strengthen their argument or their case. And so oftentimes, they would refer to cases where a certain thing went a certain way in their favor, and they would use it as a reference to how a previous case went and was favorable so that it will enhance their case, strengthen their case before the new judge. God says, bring my word, remind me what I say. And when you say, God, you say, if I delight myself, you give me the desires of my heart. You said no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. You said that I'm, I'm the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. Your word declares that they will fall seven days. You said, you said, God looks back in his word and says, oh, I said it. My book said it. Therefore, it must be. Why? Because now he knows. You know your rights and privileges. You've got to take it to the realm of the spirit and walk in the authority so that you can get the results you want. Don't play with your future in this season. 2021 is too important for us to get up and say one little prayer. And the unfortunate reality in the Bahamas, we are getting a momentum arising in what I call silly season. Now, you may get offended by the term, but I will say it, it is silly season. It's the season when church folks, hear me, start getting mad with each other. They love for all these years until it's election time. And then they start Stop talking and rowing. Why? Because each person want their, their party in and this party don't do nothing for them. They don't even know the people personally, but they'll fight for these people. I'm not telling you not to have a preference, but what I am saying is you would rather kill your sister who you're going to be in eternity with and you will start to fight for her. And a man or a woman who don't even care, they're just happy because they like the pomp and pageantry of the position. And some of them don't even care about your God. God have a new system. It's going to be a glorious day when these worldly systems be cut off. And God establishes his righteous kingdom. But until then, we've got to comply. And I'm not by no means knocking down politics. It is the way by which God has instituted for the governing of a society, but of governments to govern society. But I want you to understand. Hear me, Christians. And hear me, Grand Bahama. Hear me, Bahamas. As we now come into this new season of politics. Remember whose you are, that your first allegiance is to God, and you must conduct yourself that brings honor to the God that you say you serve. Can't be switching on like light. One day you're cursing, and, and the next day you're back, and holy, holy God's not marked. And God says it's time for us to be serious about this journey. It must be consistent, and it must be true. That's why we got to bathe ourselves in prayer. Why? Because prayer will keep us potent. Prayer will keep us uncompromising. Prayer will keep us bringing honor. Why? Because it washes our thought life and prepares us, fortifies us to be vessels fit for the master's use. If the fight is not won in the realm of the spirit, it will be defeated in the natural. Hear me when I say to you, this fight is a real fight. I'm saying to you today, we've got to put on the whole armor of God. 
We've got to equip ourselves and position ourselves in this season because you're fit to fight. And I'm hearing this to you, develop a discipline to pray. I don't care if you don't do anything. If you strengthen your faith and you strengthen your prayer life, listen, the devil has no power over you. And faith is more than just believing. It is acting in accordance to what you believe. So if you put works with your faith and you put prayer behind your work and your faith, I'm here to tell you, what could the devil do with such a person? He can't do nothing with you because you'll be fortified and armored above, beneath, and around. The angelic host of heaven will be around you. Michael will escort you wherever you need to go. Hear me by the Spirit of God. You will be the kind of person that the world needs to make successful manifestations. And so, if we're going to fight, we've got to be intentional. If the truth be told, we have been called to win in this area. We've been called to be victorious. God has called us to be on top every time. But our ability to be on top every time is predicated on our willingness to hear the heart of God, live out what the book says, and do it with precision and obedience. But what keeps us poor, I believe, in this in our, in our position and disadvantage is our inability to recognize or discern how important our need is to walk in the power and purpose of prayer. We are kept poor because we don't understand. We haven't discerned how important prayer is to the life of the believer. Prayer is more than begging God. Prayer is more than asking for stuff. I need a car and a home and, and all of those things are benefits to the life that favors God. But it's contending in the realm of the spirit until the will of God is made known on the earth to our lives. And so when we, when we fight and contend in the spirit, we're contending for the will of God to be made manifest through our lives. Because our power to pray will ignite and activate our purpose for praying. See, it's your purpose for praying that's going to solve situations for others and for yourself. It's your purpose for praying that's going to illuminate and ignite favor in your life. Hear me when I say this. In the book of Genesis chapter 32, the story is talked about Jacob as he wrestled with a man. And if you read from 24 to 28 of Genesis chapter 32, you will discover that Jacob is now in a combat with a man. And the Bible says that he contends with this man until the breaking of day. And the man and him were fighting and the man said, the day is breaking, let me go. And he said, I will not let you go till you bless me. And the Bible says that the man touched the hollow of his thigh and he was disjointed. And what happened? But even though he was disjointed in his thigh, he did not let go. He was contending. This speaks of prayer, of intercession, of warfare. He was willing to fight until he got what he was believing for. Now, what's the miracle? What's the beauty of this story? Jacob went in fighting, but Israel came out of the fight. He went in as Jacob, the grabber, the supplanter, the trickster, but he came out as Israel, Prince of God. His name was changed in the fight. I'm here to tell you, God's about to change your name in the middle of the fight. That's why you fit. God's about to change your name in the middle of the game. As you fight, as you wage war against the forces of darkness, as you lay a hold of what you're believing God for your family, I'm here to tell you, God is going to change 
your name. And a changed name is a changed person, is a changed character, is a change, is the essence of who you are. And so God is about to change your name. Hear me. The devil wants your name to be an imitation of somebody else. But hear me. When God changes your name, he gives you a name that's worthy of where he's about to elevate you. Jacob the supplanter went in. Jacob the trickster went fighting. When Israel the prince of God came out. I'm here to tell you in the middle of your warfare, in the middle of your fight, in the middle of your intercession, in the middle of your game, God's going to change you and he's going to transform you and you will come out better. You'll come out bigger. You'll come out stronger. Why? Because you dare to stay in the fight. I'm here to tell you, don't quit in the middle of the fight. It's been hard. It's been long, but keep in the fight. My daughter said something to me last night and I smiled after we were because she was not aware what I was going to talk about um, this morning and she she said to me she said daddy she said daddy do you is it wrong to just um, I mean you believe in God for stuff and you've been believing for a while and it seems like it always a roadblock she says is it Wrong if you just say, you know, I ain't worrying about that no more. I just gonna do, I just gonna keep working just to, I'm not putting my mind or I ain't worrying about that no more. If it come, it come. If it doesn't come, it doesn't come. And so she was trying to say, would I be wrong if I take that position? I said, dead wrong. I said, why? Because faith is believing in your heart and your mind that the thing you're believing for you will get even though you do not yet see it. But you act in accordance with confidence that you already have it until it manifests. I'll say it again. Faith is knowing in your heart and mind, is believing that the thing you do not yet see, you will get, that you're hoping and believing for, you will get, even though you do not yet see it. But you act in accordance to your faith, believing and acting like you already have it until it manifests. And I said to her, I said, honey, listen, God never told us how long what you're believing for will take. Sometimes God will give it instantaneous because you meet the criteria. Other times God is working on you so you'll be fit to to embrace what it is you're believing for. I said, sometimes God's waiting for the other components to get prepared so that when you come, you won't lose nothing and it won't be deficient. And so there are, there are many variables as to why it ain't rage. I said, but you hold faith even when it don't make sense. She started to smile. And I said, to her, I said, baby, let me tell you something. Whatever God promised, he will make good. I said, you hold your faith. I said, and hold strong. I said, and every day you give him praise for it. I said, listen, he never told us when he was going to send it. I said, and she looked at me and she cracked a joke. She said, you and mommy been waiting from the 80s for some stuff. I said, but look what God did in the process of our way. He never stopped blessing us. We, we may not see everything we've been believing for, but there are some stuff we weren't even praying for we already received. So God will work it on the back end. I'm here to tell you, our, our life was not empty in the journey from 81 to now. We saw God making his manifestation in our lives. And while you are busy focusing on this, God giving you other blessings you didn't even know. And so I told her, I said, our, our life was not void of blessings. And I started counting off stuff. 
that God did from 81 to now. And I started saying, look, we got this. Look what God did here. Look how this happened. Look about this. And I started talking about stuff. And I watched the smile came on our face. I said, these weren't things we were praying about. But while we were waiting on this, God was just sending little bonuses. I'm here to tell you why. Because we stayed steadfast in prayer. We refused to doubt. Every day, my wife would get up and she'd say, I don't care what it looked like. Listen, she'd say, honey, God got us. God got us. And she would say it. And sometimes you won't look in the natural and you can't see. I mean, all that you're believing for, but she'll say it. God got us. She said, listen, God's about to turn some things around. God's about to turn some situations around. She would start speaking it. Why? Because if, you're, if your mouth speak it and your ears hear it, your heart will believe it. You've got to speak it so your ears can hear it and your heart will believe what your mouth speak. And I'm here to tell you, God will turn it around, but you've got to petition it in faith, believe in Continue to war. And when the devil speak to your mind, cast down imaginations. Cast down every high thing. Cast it down and say, I'm going to win. And I'm going to win big. I want you to know today, friends, as I close this. Jacob went in fighting a man. But he came out contending with God. Jacob went in as Jacob, but he came out as Israel. What was the defining reality? He stayed in the fight. He made up his mind. I'm not losing this time. You've got to be intentional in 2021. Hear me when I say this to you. You must be intentional in the fight. When last they just stopped and said, I'm tired of coming up short. And then you look in your life and said, I see why. It's my own inconsistencies. Do you know people who don't do much of God's stuff? They talk about people. They ridicule everybody ain't saved but them and their family. Everybody else got problems but them and their family. And they will cuss you, your, your family, your heritage, your lineage. They would wish you never on the earth. Why? For their own selfishness. And every time God blesses you, they're offended. Do you know people like that? Well, let me tell you. There are people in the earth who do not want your success. I know there are some who don't want mine. But because I love God. And God has not given them the mandate. To determine my future. I'm going to make it. You're going to make it. You know the one like that. I believe all of us got somebody. Who don't want to see us succeed. But why are you saying this Bishop? I'm saying this so you would understand. That if I hold my peace. If I continue to contend. If I continue to trust. Irrespective what negatives. They speak about you. God will bless you. In the midst of their ridicule. I'm getting caught up on haters and all these different things. I'm simply saying. Don't believe everybody wants to see you succeed. You better love yourself enough to see your success. And that's why you don't wait for others to pray for you. I encourage you to pray for me. But if you don't pray for me, it's okay because I'm praying for me. I love my future enough to pray for me and my family. I'm here to tell you, you will be in a, a welcome addition, but I'm going to pray for me. I'm not going to believe. Why? Because there are voices who are speaking my demise, and I've got to cancel them in the realm of the spirit. And so every day and every night, I send them into the abyss and into hell. Why? Because I know what God has promised me. The devil don't want you to make it. And so I want to close. You're fit to fight. Fight for your future. And so there are those who are out there and they're not doing nothing. And they, they got a lot of God. Even though when they measure themselves, they discover I ain't doing the God things. Defend the cause. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. I encourage you, friends, 
fight the good fight of faith. I encourage you today, like Jacob, don't let go until he blesses you. And I'm not just talking house and car and things, though they're wonderful, but I'm talking that he bless you and change your name and make you into the man or woman that God has, that he has predestined you to be. I won't let go until he blesses me. Hear me. Your faith, it's in you. He is in you. And greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe you receive it and you will have it. Whatever you desire when you pray. Now make sure your desire is in alignment with the word of God. Because he dwells in you, your desire is now his desire. Whatever he desires through your life, believe you receive and you will have it. There's a beautiful scripture found in in Philippians and, and I believe it says this, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Philippians 2 and 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. You know what that means? That God is inside you willing and will is desire. He is giving you his desire and he's giving you the blueprint or the plan to execute what he has desired through your life. So what you believe is your desire is actually God's desire through you. So it is God, watch this, both to will and to do, to execute his desire for your life. And so I want you to rise and shine for the light, your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I want you to, to stand your ground and, and know that the God you serve is well able to deliver. I want you to be the soldier that God has called you to be. I want you to, to not, fall down on your on your quest to the fulfillment of God's purpose for your life but it's going to take prayer do not negate do not neglect do not abandon do not ignore praying prayer is necessary and i'm not talking reciting i'm talking about intense passionate intercession it is necessary develop a prayer life my friend if you are to be elevated into anything that is successful it is going to take a praying person god's been doing wonderful things in my life and i know it is a direct result of my prayer. Effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous person availeth much, gets great results. If you want to see God's manifestation in this hour, pray, wrestle. Why? Because you are fit. You are qualified to fight. Amen and amen. As I pray for you today, I want to pray for those of you who are listening that God would activate within your life and mine, continually a fervor for prayer. That you would get up in the mornings and desire to pray. That you would, you would cast down every distraction and everything that would hinder you from praying. That you would understand the value of prayer and see that with my results and success. See, you get sporadic stuff, but, but, but real consistent, stabilizing, permanent success is going to come to a person whose heels are dug in. Who believes? God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all they ask, think, or imagine by the power that works in them. How do you ask? You ask in prayer. And so you must be a praying person. Hear me today. Family praying. 
Friend, pray. Man of God, pray. Woman of God, pray. Mother, pray. Daddy, pray. Pray. God will hear you. Yes, the son's been wayward and he's, he's caused you much pain, but pray. Tell God what you need him to do and continue to bless him. Yes, he may act up. And whenever you pray and then God's giving you results, the devil start manifesting garbage in your face. So it looks like it's getting worse, but pray. Because when you pray and you are, you are stirring up the spirit realm and you're subduing principalities. And whenever you subdue principalities, the devil start to panic. Pray. If you keep praying long enough, fair, faithful enough, consistent enough, you will see the results. And suddenly, God will manifest what he promised. Amen. Hear me. That's for you today. Don't give up. Pray and watch God move. Father, today I pray. I pray for every soul that is watching this, every soul that will connect with this today. Let them get in their spirit the passion and power and purpose of praying. But more importantly, let them see the need and the benefit of praying. Not only are we building relationship with you, but we are fortifying our spirit to walk in success and in wholeness in the earth realm. Father, today, I thank you for the power of prayer. I thank you that we are healed by the blood of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are making all grace abound to our account. We thank you that the enemy has no occasion over your children. Today we decree and declare favor in the name of Jesus. God, give us victory. Order our steps, direct our path, and what the devil has planned, we uproot now by the name. Every snare, every plan, we root it up in the name of Jesus by faith and believe it so. God, there are some people who have been believing for healings for their families, for their moms and their dads and their children. And they've been believing for personal healings in their bodies. And, and it seems like it goes in, it's like nothing is happening. But Lord, we don't know what the plans, what your plans are, but we do know that healing is the children's bread. And so today by faith, we speak healing to that, bum, to that mother. We command right now epilepsy to go. We command right now every diabetes to go. We command cancer of the breast and cancer of the womb and cancer of the esophagus, cancer. Oh, right now, the lungs, we command it to go in the name of Jesus. We speak healing right now to glaucoma. We command it to go in the name of Jesus. We speak to air infections and air go in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus, be made whole. We speak to legs and, and, and uh, uh, problems, sciatic conditions. Go in Jesus' name. By the authority of God, you are wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. I speak right now against lupus. I command it to go in Jesus' name. You are intruder into that body. I command it by the blood of Jesus. Go in Jesus' name. Father, I speak right now to tumors. I command you now. Go in Jesus' name. I speak in the name of Jesus. Every area right now, brain, cancer to the brain. Go in Jesus' name. I speak transformation. I speak Break right now, right now. Retardation, go. I speak to right now. Dyslexic, go in Jesus' mighty name. I speak to every mental condition, every mental health issue. Command it to go in Jesus' name. You are healed by the power of God. Father, I pray right now for that young girl who got up, but she hasn't spoke from she born for years, and they've been concerned, that parent have been concerned. Father, I decree right now, put words in her mouth, give her ears an alignment to her vocal cords. I pray now in the name of Jesus, give them the greatest gift ever. Let that child say something that will supersede their faith, that will cause their faith to leave. Father, I speak now. I loose the tongue. I now, dumb and deaf spirit, I command you to loose in Jesus' name. Be made whole by the power of God. We give you glory. We give you thanks. We thank you for victory by the authority of God. It is so. It is done. That's all right. Devil, you're still a loser. Yeah, you're still a loser. You're still a loser. Uh-huh. And your imps are losers. And your Acolytes are losers, for we know in whom we believe, and those who work for you shall not see victory. Lord, I thank you for victory in the name of Jesus. God, right now, send your healing balm across this nation and indeed this earth. 
Father, I thank you. Oh, I feel your presence. Father, I thank you for your success. God, through the lives of your people today, in Jesus' name, be made whole. Be made whole. Be made whole. It's done in Jesus' name. Receive it by faith. All things are possible to them who believe. Some are instant, some are progressive. Continue to believe and watch God move. Amen. Amen. See you next week. God bless. Jacob didn't let the Lord go until he got his blessings and you're fit to do the same. Don't underestimate the power of your prayers. Thank you for watching today. If you were blessed by today's message, please share it with your family and friends. Visit our social pages and access even more resources. Kingdom Worship Center International on Facebook and KWCI242 on YouTube and Instagram. Like, subscribe, and share. We want to get the word of God out to the whole world. We are grateful for the continued financial support of our faithful partners and friends. If you would like to help us fulfill the vision, our online banking information is on the screen. If you want this information sent directly to your phone, text the word GIVE to our mobile number, 242-727-8999. All external ministries are back on schedule. Tuesday morning prayer at 5.30 a.m. Kingdom Round Table on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m. And Women's Ministry is held the second and fourth Wednesday of each month at 6.30 p.m. All facilitated by Zoom Online. All meeting credentials remain the same. We are counting down to our annual prayer advance, which begins February 1st. This year, we are hosting it online. It will be life-changing. You do not want to miss this. February is packed full of greatness, and we are excited to let you know our second business expo closes out the month with two days of expositions. To learn more or register for this event, text the word EXPO to the number on the screen. Space is limited, so register today. For that in-person worship experience, join us at the sanctuary every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Don't forget to wear your mask. All safety protocols fully enforced. Once again, thank you for watching today. Remember, you are fit to fight every battle. Take aim and go for it. Happy Vision Month, everyone. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time on Kingdom at Home.